Anyone who's been following my YouTube channel for a little while might realise that I do all of my game development uh, stuff on my computer, which runs Debian Linux rather than Windows. Now, I thought I'd just outline some of the tools that I use when working on Linux, so here we go. Now, obviously, the biggest component of my game dev toolkit is probably the Godot engine. Uh, as anybody who follows my channel will know, uh, I think it handles really nicely, and it does everything I wanted to do for 2D games, although I haven't really ventured into 3D. If you don't want to use this engine, then you can use an experimental build of Unity, which apparently supports Linux, which is great. However, in my experience, from about half an hour a couple of years ago, the build, this build of Unity is filled with bugs, and from what I've heard, it isn't actually much better today. Some of the really bad ones are out, but it's still not perfect. However, at least as a transitional step between Windows and Linux, Unity is still there, and it sort of works. Now, another engine that works way better on Linux is Unreal. Uh, since Unreal is able to be, uh, be built on pretty much any machine via the way of keeping its source code available. Uh, although it's unavailable for edit, so I don't think it's technically open source, it just means you can download the source code and you can, uh, can compile it. Which means that it will run on pretty much any operating system. Now, I've opened Unreal, and while it's a pretty damn heavy program compared to Godot, or even compared to Unity, it does seem to work perfectly. No bugs, no glitches, and no unexpected crashes. Now, unfortunately, if you're a big fan of Game Maker, then this transition is going to hurt. No matter how many times I've tried, I just cannot get Game Maker to work properly on Linux. Even using Wine, which is a compatibility layer specifically designed to make Windows programs work on Linux. I mean, your best bet is to get Game Maker running in a virtual machine, but that's not a great setup, and it's probably... that's That's got to be a nightmare to use. So in short, I use the Godot engine for the bulk of my game dev stuff. However, there are a few more tools that I use, so I'll just name them off. Now, Acerprite is really good for pixel art, and chances are if you're running Windows and doing pixel art, you'd be using this one too, since it's pretty damn popular. Now, I do find that it opens a little faster and runs a little smoother on Linux, but that might just be my own subjective experience, so I won't pass that one off as fact. Anyway, if you don't or can't for some reason use Acerprite, you can use online editors like Piskel or Pixie. Both of which seem pretty good to me. I, I started off using Piskel editing Terraria sprites, however, it became a little bit unwieldy for bigger projects, hence why I switched to Acerprite. However, what if you don't want to do pixel art? Well, you have some options here. You can either run Photoshop in Wine, which I'm told runs very nicely and efficiently, or you can choose from a few Linux alternatives. Now, the leading one I'd recommend is actually called Krita, if you're coming from Photoshop, because Krita is easy to use, pretty quick, it has a slick and intuitive UI, and it's just a really nice program in terms of the workflow and the way everything is set up. Now, I generally recommend Krita to anyone who wants a nice digital art program. Now, the other obvious answer that I have to mention on penalty of Richard Stallman strangling me in my sleep is GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Tool. Now, it's pretty good, and I do use GIMP sometimes if I want to generate a graphic or edit a picture, and I used it for all the Steam uh, capsule images and everything like that, um, because it's really useful for certain tasks, although I'm not sure if I would recommend it as a general digital art tool, because compared to Krita, well, Krita just has so many more uh, features and, and easy things to use, so I'm not sure. Um, anyway... Let's move on to an area that I know significantly less about, music. Now, if you want music, I'd probably recommend something like Beatbox, because it's easy, web-based, and you can basically just click randomly with your eyes shut, and you'll get something which isn't actually that bad. However, if you want a little bit more than a simple chiptune generator can give you, you can move on to something like the much less popular Bosca Sayoil. Now, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm going to keep going with Bosca Sayoil, uh, and it is very similar to Beatbox, I'm sure it was based off it in some way, but it does allow a much wider variety of instruments, BPMs, etc. It's basically Beatbox Plus, although its complexity, it does lose out on some of the simplicity that makes Beatbox so easy to create with in the first place. Now, if you're a real music boy, then, well, okay, chances are you don't need me telling you this, but you can go ahead and run a DAW of your choice. Chances are, if it isn't natively Linux compatible, which... I'll be honest, many of them aren't, you'll be able to run it perfectly fine under Wine. I've never had any problems with any of my terrible attempts at using FL Studio. So anyway, if you want some sound effect synthesis, then you can use Audacity, which again, if you're on Windows, you probably would be using this all the time anyway. Download some samples from freesound.org or your website of choice, edit them to your needs, and you are good to go. 
However, if you are making a chiptune game and you want something a little bit more specialised to help, I can recommend you the tried and true SFXR. If you want something a little bit more easy to use or refined looking, you can go for Chiptone. Now usually for things like Ludum Dare or any game where I need a quick little chiptune thing, I would use Chiptone since I really prefer the intuitive visuals and nice UI. However, I can understand why somebody would use SFXR for more fine control over the sound, and plus I think SFXR is technically more faithful to the original like Game Boy chips and whatever it is. Uh, they're different tools, but for a, be a beginner I would recommend Chiptone. Now lastly, let's get on to some code editors, because I realised that even if you're using a proper engine like Godot or Unity or Unreal, you might still want a third party tool to edit code with. Now my first suggestion is always Sublime Text 3, and again, many people uh, on Windows will have heard of this too. And VS Code also works very nicely on Linux, as does Atom, but I would always recommend Sublime Text 3. It runs so damn smoothly, it's so nice, and I I've been looking for excuses to use it, I just get so much pleasure out of it. But I guess failing Sublime, Atom would do just fine, and if not that, then I guess VS Code. Um, and, you know, the, uh, you know, IntelliJ stuff, they, that all runs, I think. Uh, anyway, I think that's pretty much everything. I'll rattle off a few more useful programs which are neither here nor there, or strictly, not strictly game development. Uh, Caden Live is really useful, and it's what I use for editing this video. OBS is always the king of video recording, and LMMS is a Linux native DAW which I'm sure is useful in the hands of someone who knows how to use it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos about Linux and me using Linux to do Linuxy things in the year of the Linux desktop. Goodbye.